Are we live right now? Oh, right. Yes, we're live. Welcome, Serena Tushino. Hi. She was just tweeting me that we're live. I'm, I'm tweeting it out. How are you? I'm doing amazing. I'm doing so good. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Oh, of course. We're so excited to have you now. We're very excited for the season premiere tonight. Are you excited to see it? I'm really excited and I'm kind of sad that this season is over. I it went by so quickly. If you by the way, if you guys hear any random noises, my dog is right below me right now. And some of my people that follow me on Twitter or Instagram know it's his name's Buddha. And Buddha is a French bulldog and he makes really loud noises. So just in case you hear random things throughout this interview, he's He's right there, making noises. <laughs> Aww. Hi, Buddha. Okay, so um, what are you most excited to see on tonight's finale? Um, I feel I'm, I'm most excited to see how the fans react, personally. I, it's, it's, I think they're going to have the same reaction that we did when we read the finale, where you assume it's going to go one place, and then it goes a completely different place. Place. It's it's one of those things where it's everything that you wanted in a finale, but nothing that you expected. It's just, it's so intense, and there's explosions, and obviously in some of the teasers they've seen, there's some kissing, there's some things that happen. It's just all kind of pushed into this one amazing medley of awesomeness. So, yeah, well, I'm excited to see how everybody reacts to it, because we have such amazing fans. All right. Well, that sounds exciting. Um, will we be losing any of the roommates on tonight's finale? I don't know. You'll have to watch and see. It's one of those shows. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. So it's you know, hopefully not. Fingers crossed. But you, you, it could happen. All right. Well, um, before we get to the fan questions, I just have a few preliminary questions. So Briggs is really determined to get revenge. What is your personal take on getting revenge? Um, I think all the people that know me, I'm really not one to get revenge because whatever whatever a person has done to me is really personal unto them and that's their karma. And if I decide to act and become exactly what they were to me, that's, then I take on their karma, and I take on that energy, and I'm not really willing to do that. So I understand definitely where Briggs is coming, and I think maybe if somebody I loved was killed in a horrific situation like that, maybe I would. Maybe I would want revenge. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm quite a passive person. I mean, you can tell my dog's name is Buddha. I travel a lot. I go you know, on these kind of philanthropic um, adventures. So for me, I'm not the most vengeful person. But I think it depends on the situation, and in Briggs's case, you kind of understand it, and you get to understand it a lot more in this final episode, for sure. Okay. Um, Jeff Easton actually said in an interview that his revenge energy is going to affect all of the roommates and everyone around him. How does it affect Paige? Um, well, I think it directly, Mike made it affect Paige more so than it normally would. Obviously. Um, with something happening with a roommate, uh, you want to be there for them, you want to understand, maybe there's been um, a little bit of duplicity there, but I think because Mike is investigating Briggs and it goes from maybe just a vengeful lover to a, you know, full-blown murdering psychopath heroin addict, there's this extreme slippery slope and it's going to affect people and it's going to affect people in many different ways. For me, it's this... Um, this betrayal in so many ways, not only from Mike, but extremely from Briggs. With um, with Johnny, there's just because Johnny is so open and loving, and he just you know he he's he's that open heart. So to him, it's just like it's it's somebody he looks up to, and he's just losing that. And for Charlie, it's a family member, and um, and for Jake's, I mean, Jake's has been asked to do something. Jake's has been asked to do a favor. For him, so I think we all we're all rocked in our own ways when it comes to uh, when it comes to Briggs's kind of revenge and Briggs's you know kind of sideways behavior. <laughs> all right, well, we're sad too that season one is coming to an end, but it was just announced that uh, the network renewed it for season two. It did, so exciting! Yeah. How did you yeah. guys feel when you all found out? It was. 
It was amazing, honestly. I think um, not only are we just a huge family, like we really are just this big group of dorks that got together and we have so much fun on set and we have such a good time um, and working together so collaborative. It's, it's, we, we get the script and we do our lines and then the directors just go, okay, go, now play. So all the scenes where we're all together, we just get to play and have a good time and everybody's so supportive. Um, so to be able to do another year of that, I feel really lucky. I feel really, really lucky and our fans are amazing. Um, the tweets that we get and the pictures and the drawings. I had a girl tweet the other day being like, I got the page due and she had, she had done the ombre hair, um, which is phenomenal to me. I think it's so, I think it's so great. Um, so we're just really, really excited to have the opportunity to bring a second season and see what happens from there. Did you celebrate it all when you found out? Yes, I actually celebrated a little bit today with my agent. Um, I celebrated the other night with a really good friend of mine, Jimmy, who was on Breakout Kings uh, with me, which is the last series that I did. He played Lloyd. Uh, he took me out for a really nice dinner, and we had a good celebration, and it was lovely. But that's, I've been really lucky because both shows that I've been on, um, the cast is like, is like family, and, and that's really rare. So I got, I got a little tweet from Malcolm, and Dom sent me a text, and, you know, obviously we're all separated, um, across America, but it's just lovely to feel the families come together. Um, but yeah, we have a, we call it our party line. So on our phones, we have one that has the writers, directors, uh, producers, and then all the actors. So when something happens, I'll wake up and I'm like, either there's some sort of world disaster that just happened, or some, there's like something's going on with our party line, and it's like 72 texts, and it's from our whole crew. So we all get to celebrate, and we send funny pictures and little weird videos and things like that and so we just had a, a a major party line moment where everybody came together and it's just a whole bunch of love so That's Which awesome. on the show you can forward those pictures and videos to me <laughs> perfect okay we'll do it. absolutely <laughs> all right it's time to get to those fan questions cuz we've got a lot to go over so oh, let's see first one is from Michelle Carlbert and she okay. asks is the season finale tonight ending with a cliffhanger? Well, I think it's ending with everything does kind of get tied into a nice little bow. But if you look at one of the little the little strands, it's really frayed. And you can see just one little pull and everything will become unraveled. So while it seems like everything could be okay, in the second season you know it's going to hit the fan. You know, there's a lot there. So the writers did a really great job at balancing where you don't feel fulfilled at the end of an episode. You know when sometimes you watch a season finale and you're like, what? No, I just, you can't, you can't end like that. We have a little bit of that, but we also have everything kind of come together in a really beautiful way that makes a lot of sense. But as I said, yeah, one little, one little pull and everything's going to just unravel. Okay, well, she also wants to know, where are everyone's relationships as we head into the next season? Are there new allies between the groups, or is the house still divided? That you'll have to watch and see, because that's definitely everything that happens in the finale. Um, you start to see allies form, you start to see them fall apart, you see us come together, and right as everything seems great, we just, you know, everything dissipates. So definitely, definitely watch tonight, and I think it'll be answered. I'm digging, guys. I'm trying to get those spoilers. Okay. <laughs> nice try, Michelle. <laughs> All right. So Adrian Hickman says, unless there's a surprise tonight, Paige has yet to show a really dark side. So can you tell us if we'll see her dark side come out in the future or if you think she has a dark side? That's a really good question. Um, yeah, this, this season, obviously because I came in, I came in at the second episode, so I wasn't in the pilot, so there wasn't a you know, they didn't have an exact idea and a plan for where my character was going to go. I came in as a guest star, and then they built a character around that. Um, so we haven't really been able to see that side of her. And also with such a big ensemble and such an amazing ensemble, you really, you know, you, you have big storylines, and then you all kind of support it. And then there's another storyline, and everyone supports it. So next year, yes, we'll definitely see more sides of Paige. Will they be dark? Um, I don't think... Paige necessarily has a quote-unquote dark side. I think she has a, a efficient 
badassery kind of hard ass side, but I don't think she's ever dark. When I first talked to Jeff Easton, who's the creator of the show, obviously, he uh, I asked him what I, I said, what do you want the audience to feel every single time Paige comes on the screen? And and some of you, if you've read the interviews, you know this. He said sunshine. He's like, I want her to be like a ray of sunshine. Um, and you get into more of her backstory in the second season. Um, but yeah, I, she's a very she's a very good agent, and I think we're going to explore that more next year when it comes down to why she's in Graceland because it's the best of the best is at Graceland. So I want people to know how she got there and the skill set that she brings to Graceland that is quite deadly. So it's, it's, she's got skills. You may not see her um, use them in the first season. You get a few kind of glimpses of it when she drops down and shoots the guy and it's kind of like, oh, wow, she can, she can do this stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think, I think she's not as dark as some of the characters that I've played. I know Erica on Breakout Kings, you know, she was this murderous bounty hunter with a tortured background and, you know, a child that she longed to be with. I think Paige is much lighter. She's a big, open, loving heart, but don't mess with her because she'll kick your ass. <laughs> All right. Well, I won't mess with her. Um, Funny Ghost 13 wants to know, were you surprised when a partnership began to develop between Mike and Paige? Um, not. They had hinted at it when I first came on board. They said um, that there might be, my character might be paired up with one of the men in the household. Um, so I was ready for it. I didn't know who it was going to be, but I was definitely ready for that to happen. And as the writing went along, I saw that my storyline and the way that Aaron and I interacted, um, the way Mike and Paige were, that it was probably going to be that storyline. Um, so there was a bit of a hint that it was going to happen, but um, you never know, especially with this show. All of a sudden, I could be like making out with Jake's in the corner. You have, you have no idea what's going to happen. So yeah, so I had an idea, but I wasn't 100% sure. Mrs. Young wants to know, what was it like having an on-screen romantic tension with uh, Aaron? It was great. It was, I mean, it was easy. He's a phenomenal actor and a wonderful human being, and um, not bad to look at, of course, obviously. Um, it was really easy. It was really, really easy. Um, I had a really funny story, though, because the, the first time we had to shoot the kissing scene, um, I haven't had to do that many love scenes. I haven't had to do that many kissing scenes, so I'm still a girl, so I get nervous. So I was so nervous, during, and I'm trying to play it so cool, and I'm messing things up, but they had no idea. And I'm just kind of like, oh God, oh God, I, okay, you want me to touch his face, but my hands are sweaty. I don't want to touch his face because my hand, oh God. So I was so, I was so mortified. Um, and then we had to go back and do reshoots, and it was the kissing scene again, and I was like, oh my god. So I just had to tell Aaron this time. I'm like, Aaron, you know that I was so nervous the last time that I had to do this. And he was like, what? I didn't know that. And everybody was making fun of me. I'm like, stop making fun of me, okay? I just, I'm a girl at the end of the day. And, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful because we're friends. So he made it really, really easy. And it is strictly professional, but you do have to have that, you, you have to cross that line. You have to go there and be like, all right, we're going to kiss. Um, so yeah, I actually haven't told anybody that story. So everybody out there, you guys get that story of how I was really, really nervous. I'm nervous every single time I have to do it, though. I just, yeah, I'm very nervous. But I, I figured it out. Understandable. Kissing a guy for the first time not on camera is nerve-wracking. So I get it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, in an interview, Jeff Easton also said that the relationship actually naturally evolved on the show, partly because you guys have a good flirty relationship on set. So what is it like working with Aaron, and what is your relationship? Um, it's wonderful. As I said, it's wonderful working with Aaron. It, it's the same for, for all, the, all the cast mates. We all have that kind of rapport where we're walking around and, you know, slapping each other's asses, or Aaron singing in the, in the um, trailers, or... Manny's looking after my dog, or I'm staying overnight at Vanessa's house, or whatever it may be, or Brandon's having a huge cookout with his family and invites everybody over because he's an amazing cook. Um, so there really is that relationship with everyone. We're all so close. So when, when it just evolved, I think the way that they had written it, it made the most sense to have the two of us together. Um, but yeah, they're all just my very, very very dear friends, so it, it was, as I said, there was a part of me that I was just like, 
okay, yeah, that's easy. I have to just make out with one of my friends. That's fine. But then when it got down to it, I was like, oh, God, I have to make out with one of my friends. Oh, God. It's like, it's just so much more nerve-wracking than making out with a guy that you like. It really is. Um, but, yeah, so I, I guess that's just, you know, it's how our set is. We're all just a bunch of goofballs. <laughs> awesome. All right. So Graceland fans have has a couple of questions here. Okay, First, Grace. What was the most shocking plot twist for you when reading the script? Um, one was definitely finding out who Jangles was, because as soon as that happened, I was like, oh my god, no, Charlie, you can't, you gotta, and you wanted to like, you wanted to sit down with Vanessa and be like, you, yo, you need to talk to Charlie, you need to tell that girl what's up and figure it out, um, that was definitely one of them, um, I remember when we first found out that uh, Briggs was a heroin addict. That was definitely a shocker. That was I remember turning the last page and he's like, "Hi, I'm Briggs and I'm a heroin addict." And then the script ended and you're like flipping over the pages, being like, "No, no." And we all got on the phone. We we're like calling Jeff. We're calling each other. Like, what do you mean? And obviously Daniel knew this um, already. So he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I knew this was gonna happen." And I was like, "What?" So it was. It, I think that was probably the next one that was uh, that was that big of a a shocker. All right. Was there anything mentioned in season one that you wish would have been given more attention? Um, no, I think they did an amazing job at um, focusing on a really solid storyline and sticking to it. Sometimes you see with big ensemble casts, they try to cover too many stories. And then you get lost, or you get like, no, no, go back to, go back to that story. I want to know what's happening there. So I feel like they did a really good job at spreading things out, but also focusing on what was important. All right, her last question here. Was there anything improvised on set? Everything. Oh my gosh, so much, so much is, is improvised. It's, it's hilarious. They just let us kind of run free, and that's what's beautiful, is that we obviously honor what they're writing because they write so well, but, uh, but then they just let us go free. There's, there's so much. There was a scene with, um, where Johnny says, hey, can you hold my, my measuring stick? All of that is improvised. All of it where it's, I was just like, oh, you better, no, get that thing away from me. Like, there's just, we have that type of chemistry, so we're all, we're always kind of playing with each other. In the last episode with, like, the octopus pancakes, just being like, that's a fine-looking octopus. We had, like, 45 different takes where they're, I'm swearing in them, I'm eating it, I'm, so they just give us that kind of leeway where we can go and, and do whatever we need to do and have fun, and I think that's where the chemistry shows up on the screen. Was there anything improvised that didn't show up in the edits that was like really funny or sticks out in your mind? Yeah. Oh, there's so much, but it, it 99% of it is because we're swearing too much. It's like all of us and we're dropping F-bombs and every, like, it just, at some point, the poor director, depending on who it is, has to yell, cut like 18 times because we're throwing things at each other. We're saying like this, this, Johnny gave me a cup of tea once. I'm like, this tastes like a, like an artichoke and a potato had a baby. And we all just start cracking up. And you know, you can't, you can't have that in. You have to cut like around that. So sometimes, sometimes you can see where things had to get cut out because somebody's, you know, doing a spit take and they can't hold it in anymore. Or somebody's making a really crazy face off screen and you're trying to keep it together. So it's always laughing. It's always, always laughing. So you miss, you miss a lot of it because we're all very twisted human beings with our, <laughs> with our humor. But, uh, but I think they do a good job of getting enough, enough out there that you guys can see kind of who we are. I love it. I want to see a blooper reel. Oh, um, okay, so the best. there's the best blooper reel. I hope, I think they're actually going to try to get it out for, um, for the DVD set or whatever it is. I think they're going to try to put one out because it's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's a lot of Aaron singing and dancing. All right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You have to go buy the DVD set so you can see the blooper reel. There you go. Um, so Victoria Pennington wants to know, what was your favorite scene to film? Um, oh, God, there were so many. I think one of the most fun scenes actually to film was the the football scene, the beach football scene with uh, Mike and Johnny. That originally was a uh, basketball scene, um, and then we changed it to beach football, and it was hilarious. It was so, I was so sore the next day, because we were really tackling each other. At one point, I took Aaron down so hard that, like, as soon as it happened, there was, like, silence, and then everybody started laughing. I was like, oh, shoot, are you okay? He's like, I'm good. I'm like, okay, we're good. Okay, great. But I, t like, I took it seriously. Like, I just, I just 
took him completely down. Um, I think that was probably one of the most fun scenes. And then there's just any of the scenes where it's all the cast together, that by far is, is the most fun. Like when we see that in a script, we all get ready because it's, you know, it's going to be a long but really fun day. Okay, no PG answers for this question. You've got to tell me the truth, okay? okay? Who's the most fun to work with on camera? See, I can't even answer that because they're all. it all depends on the scenes. Like, uh, Manny and I have tons of fun when it's, like, banter. Like, him and I have that, like, brother-sister kind of just, like, bickering. But there's still that sort of, like, tension there. So we have that where it's, like... He'd be, his character's like the type of character that I would go and like mess with. You know what I mean? Like I'd walk by his room and just like underwear and a t-shirt and just kind of like mess with him. But there's, there's, it honestly, it just depends. It totally depends on the circumstance because everybody has their own thing about them that's so much fun. Like Vanessa just cracks you up. Like you can't even, there's so many times that, that we've had to cut because she's making us laugh. So that's yeah, that's a really tough one because everybody has their everybody has their moments where you're just like I, I can't I can't even I can't even look at you right now like go away just go away. <laughs> so, All yeah. right, I'll take that answer. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so Marla wants to know what's the best part about playing Paige. Um, I think that she's just a kick-ass girl. I think she's a really strong, amazing um, female on TV, and I love that. And it's not just about um, you know, originally when they asked me to go blonde, they're like, well, we want you to be the blonde on the show. And I was really hoping that I wasn't going to be the quintessential blonde that kind of meant that she was dumbed down a little bit. So I was like, no, blondes are smart. Blondes, they may have more fun, although I'm a brunette and I have a lot of fun. Um, they may have more fun, but I just didn't want to see her go in that route, and they didn't. She's still kick-ass. She's still super smart. It's just kind of this beachy, laid-back I feel like she's kind of this the sister to everyone. Like she can, she wants to, you know, sit down and hear your problems. But then she's like, "Get your ass up and let's go play some beach football, or let's go shoot some guns, or let's, you know, it's like the sister everybody wants." Um, and she's really diverse, so I have a lot of fun playing that because it's one moment she's having like a deep conversation with Mike, and the next one she's being a tough ass with with Johnny. So it's you know, and she's really tight with Briggs, and I just love her. I think she's really diverse, and I like that about her. Heck yeah, Graceland wants to know, what would you like to see happen with Paige next season? Um, I think for me, I, I would just like to get into her backstory a little bit more. I'd love to see some more action. Um, I did gymnastics for a really long time um, and have done quite a bit of, uh, of stunt work and, and fight training. So I would love to see that utilized a little bit more um, because she is trained in that way, because she is... She's really lethal. Like she's, you know, she has to be, especially because the covers that she goes under as a lot of the time is as the girlfriend. You know, she went under as Bobby Moy's girlfriend. She's gone under a lot of other times. So when it gets down to the awkward moments, she can't always be spiking his drink with birth control. Sometimes she's going to have to defend, you know, defend herself. So I would love to see a little bit more action come out and um, just keep going with the storyline as it is. But I'd like to see her backstory and kind of, you know, add that extra layer of just badassery in there. All right, Joey Hammond says, if you had to be stuck on an island with one other cast member, who would it be? Oh, that's a question. I don't know, because, like, Daniel's super tall. I feel like he could reach some coconuts for me, and he's not bad to look at. And then, you know, Manny's hilarious. He always makes me laugh, and I feel like he's he looks very, like, limber. I feel like he could, you know, he could climb some trees and, like, fend off tigers. And then there's Aaron, who's like a, a, a source of entertainment. Literally, you could just, he's a one-man show. You could be like, go, entertain me for the next 98 years while we're on this island. And he could do that. Um, and there's Brandon, who's just like this beautiful human being. He's just so funny and so intelligent. So I feel like I could have like a good, a good conversation. But I think I'd have to say Vanessa, because she encompasses all of that. Um, she's such a, she's a tough cookie. She definitely is. She's the most loving mother I've ever seen. So I would just be like, can you mother me for the next, you know, years that we're all here? She can cook like nobody's business. She's hilarious. Um, and we became really, really close on the set. So I think I'd have to pick my beautiful, wonderful co-star, Vanessa. 
Right. Although, then, although then we then there's no way that you know we would die out. So maybe I have to pick a boy, but I'll go with Vanessa for now. <laughs> okay. So Emma wants to know what's your favorite motto to live by. Um. I would say I have two. One uh, is may my success be for the success of mankind, um, which is directly tying your success in with that of another. So you don't have to live for another. You live for yourself. But in that, you make sure that any good fortune that you have has a tangible outcome in this world. Um, and I think that's sort of the future of philanthropy, of charitable work, is not, is not becoming a martyr, but just becoming... Um, allowing yourself to be in the spotlight and then taking that light and diverting it to somewhere in the world or somewhere in your backyard that doesn't necessarily get seen, that needs that sort of illumination. Um, and then the other one, as I break my table, um, <laughs> the other one uh, is, oh, there's, there's, that, there's three, but I'll, I'll try to pick it down. The other one is One World, One Tribe, and I firmly believe in that. I travel around a lot, and the more I get to know people and the more I get to see culture, um, there are some very fundamental um, belief systems and platforms that people live by, and I think once we stop uh, finding this kind of secular idea of each other, and you know, the news is very secular. It's very them and us, and this, you know. And I think once we start to to realize that we are just one tribe, we are, you know, the human tribe. I think that's really going to bring us together in, in a lovely way. So those are the two that I, I try to hold myself to. Okay, I'm looking at some of the questions that have been tweeted in during our live stream here. So let me pick some out before we end our conversation. Um, let's see. What character, this is from Billy. I don't want to try to pronounce his last name. Sorry, Billy. What character do you enjoy or is more challenging to portray, Erica in Breakout Kings or your current role? I'd say they're pretty equal. I mean, Erica was physically a lot more demanding, but um, I mean that could, that could happen next season for Paige. Uh, they're both they're both on the outer realm of me, so it's not something that I'm like, oh, that's so easy because it's just it's basically just me. A, I'm not Erica. I'm not a murder murderer, bounty hunter, you know, anger management girl. Um, and for Paige, I'm not you know the little kind of surf bum very easy going. I'm, I'm a happy medium between the two, but still haven't killed anybody. But um, I, I, I would say probably the harder one to do was Erica because she was, she had such rage issues that you really were all over the map. There was, I was crying and then I was beating somebody up and then I was grumpy and then I was happy. And to, you know, we shot the first season in, in Toronto, which was minus 30. It was one of the hardest shoots I've ever done in my life. It was just excruciating. Luckily, everybody was so awesome. So I would say probably um, probably Breakout Kings was the harder one. Okay. Uh, Bruin007 wants to know, having played Zatanna on Smallville, would you be interested in starring in a future Marvel or DC film? And if so, what superhero would you want to play? Heck yeah. Um, I absolutely would. Uh, I, for me... My Smallville fans are the like the diehards. Like they are just always there. I always get tweets. I always get fan mail and things like that. And I just appreciate them so much. And Zatanna was tons of fun. I remember when I first got it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be a magician, so I'm gonna be in like a cape and like maybe a big hat. And then they're like, yeah, we we, we want to know what bodysuit size you are. And I was like, my my a, bo a bodysuit? Why do you what? And so I googled her. I was like, oh, okay. She's a sexy magician. All right, all right. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna go to the gym now. Um, but I had so much fun playing her. So I would love a to play Zatanna again. Um, I've seen a lot of people that do like these weird mashups of me as Wonder Woman. Like they put my head on like these crazy buff Wonder Woman bodies, um, which always make me laugh. So I would. I would like to. I would like to see what it would be like to play Wonder Woman, but in sort of like a dark night way, where you bring out the kind of like, you bring out that dark side of her. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not sexy woman in spandex running around and fighting people. You you bring that kind of, that element to it. So I think those two would be my my two favorites to play for sure. I could totally see you as Superwoman. Totally. Right? 
I feel like I could just, I mean, I just cut all my hair off, so it's, you know, but when I had my big dark hair, it was, it, I, it would work a lot better, but, you know, they're not going to do it for a while. Exactly, yeah. they're not going to do it for a while, so I can, you know, I'll grow it out by then. <laughs> all right, so one of the last questions, the real okay. Wombawa wants to know, is tonight going to be the best episode yet? Absolutely. I mean, they're all pretty fabulous, but it's going to be the best and the worst. It's going to be the best because it's the best, and it's the worst because it's the last one for this season. So hopefully it fulfills everything that you guys want. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a phenomenal episode. It's You just you don't know who's going to make it out alive and you don't know if everybody is and that was one of the that was one of the scariest things reading it where we're all like oh god oh god am i going to die is she going to die is he going to die who's going to die there what just happened like there's just it's blow after blow after blow so it's definitely it's definitely the best episode so far in my eyes we can't wait to see it guys the season finale is tonight thank you so much sarinda before we sign off, everyone yes. is tweeting about Buddha. Do you want to give Buddha a little cameo? I'll get him. Hold on one sec. I'll get him. He's, oh, he's a heavy little guy. But I was actually walking. I was actually walking down the street today, and a guy stopped, and he's like, "There's Buddha." Oh, say hi. Hi. Oh, he's so oh. cute. I was walking down the street today, and somebody, uh, somebody stopped and was like, "Is that Buddha?" And I was like, yeah. He's like, I follow you on Instagram. He's like, oh, you're from Graceland. I was like, I love the fact that my dog got recognized before before I did. That's amazing. But yeah, this is this is my beautiful little boy. Yeah, hi. He's like, he doesn't quite get the whole the whole computer thing yet, do you? No, you don't. No, you oh oh I oh tanks oh tanks. Yeah, he's a little. I love your dog voice. I think you need to start a Twitter, Instagram, Buddha the dog. I feel like I should. He gets a lot of love. He had a bath yesterday, and like 500 people right away were like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. I was like, all right, I didn't want to be that person, but I think I have to. Right, Bubbies? Right, Mito? Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, everybody watching, start this uh, revolution here. Hashtag boo to the dog. Let's make her. If I get enough interest, I'll start, <laughs> I'll start it. <laughs> now he's interested. Now he's like. <laughs> You're so cute. Well, thank you so much, Sorenda. We're so excited for the finale tonight and so excited for season two. Thanks. So it's been a great season. No, and thank you so much to everybody who watched and everybody that's interested. I mean, we can't, we can't do it without you guys. And, and for us, it's just such an honor to see how interactive you are and how much you care about us and yeah as I said tweet us let us know your questions we'll try to get to them as best as we can but we just we really really appreciate it so this season two is for you and because of you so thank you again all right we're signing off guys with bye Surinda. bye guys <laughs>